Саш, садись. Коллеги, ну начинаем. Уважаемые друзья, уважаемые коллеги. Friends, dear colleagues, my name is Vladimir Mao, and I'd like to introduce myself. I was committed with a very responsible mission today to moderate this morning session, and I'd like to start with the congratulations to all of you, dear colleagues, to a wonderful national holiday, the Day of uh, Financial Worker. And I'd like to congratulate not only financial experts, but also all of you who uh, came to this second forum. I'd like to congratulate Ministry of Finance with a wonderful format, uh, which uh, is uh, quite hard to organize in uh, such a full scale. And I hope and I'm sure that our session will uh, not deceive all of you expectations and the credit of uh, trust, the credit which is a financial term, and the credit which is given to us by a big amount of uh, uh, participants. And uh, I apologize that not all of you can find places to see them, but it is much better than to see empty places when uh, it's not interesting for some of you to come. Uh, our panel is very interesting and very balanced out. We have two representatives of uh, the federal uh, authorities, uh, Mr. Abazov, Minister for the Open Government, and uh, Mrs. Orlova, uh, the Governor of Vladimir Region. We have two representatives from business, Alexander Shohin, and uh, you know, I will be in three uh, faces to introduce to you Mr. Komisarov, uh, who represents both business, the mid-sized business, and the, uh, the big business also, and the uh, uh, academic community, because he is now the deputy of uh, rector of uh, uh, the uh, higher school of state management. And also from the part of the officials, uh, uh, we can also say that uh, Alexei Komisarov uh, can be a representative, be and he is uh, one in three uh, faces. And uh, Mr. Kudrin, who represents uh, civil society, we know all uh, Mr. Kudrin in his excellent uh, political and uh, economic role, and now he is representing the, the uh, civil society. Dear guests, dear panelists, today we uh, uh, planned two things before the discussion, a video, and then we will uh, try to organize the voting for the main issues to be discussed today. So please uh, bring up the video. Nikolai Karzhenevsky, good morning. The main news uh, by now. Uh, Moscow Financial Forum is uh, organized in Moscow to discuss state management. Russia is uh, uh, one of uh, doing business leaders. Uh, it is because uh, the changes of the quality of uh, state management and the reduction of state barriers. Uh, regulatory procedures are uh, replaced by uh, information procedure. You can connect to uh, uh, chains uh, within one week. Registration of uh, transactions and enterprises in the real time mode. The system was of goods marking liquidated uh, shadow turnover. The, cre 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 uh, the list of requirements reduced corruption and electronic turnover between the state and the uh, uh, citizens, reduced reporting. Online cash desks allowed to uh, transport, uh, transmit information to taxation authorities uh, in a real time mode. And uh, due to the uh, 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 access to the credit bureau, borrowers can get credits instantly. No barriers in the national um, payment system and the credit costs reduced for small business also. Due to special functions of uh, uh, bodies, uh, uh, reduced uh, uh, the level of crime, the system of uh, automatic fixation uh, allows us to uh, prevent crime and uh, delinquencies. These were, they were all news by now, and I hope that the results of uh, this forum will make th these plans come true. Thank you.
Dear colleagues, uh, let's uh, consider that uh, uh, you all support the statement that this future will come true. And coming back to our today, I I'd like to tell you that in the very first moment when Tatiana Gennadyevna asked me whether we will organize this session on state management, I was a little bit surprised because this is a financial forum and uh, the state more political topic uh, is not very relevant. But the, my second thought was that uh, 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 the main thing is that the, all problems of economic development are still depending on the organization of the government, of the governance, of the state governance. And uh, uh, thinking further, I came to an idea that from the point of view of uh, the analysis of economic growth, we are living amid uh, the a reduction of economic factors and increasing of political factors, factors of uh, state governance. Uh, and this, I think, is the reflection of modern technological trends, modern technologies, and the ability uh, to relocate uh, production quickly, localize it in different places, technologies which allow and uh, which create conditions uh, in under which the labor cost factors or the connection to energy sources uh, doesn't play an important role. In the modern world, given modern technology in this situation, the main factor is not uh, labor price, not labor cost, not current cost, but the costs which come uh, from the politics. And uh, rephrasing the uh, statement, which we uh, uh, constantly hear from Mr. Graff that in the modern world companies uh, compete not by products but by management models. I think we can also say that in the modern world the state competes not by uh, costs, not by resources, material resources, but the but by management models because everything else is adopted, is adjusted. Of course, it uh, uh, relates not the weakly developed uh, industries, but the uh, cutting edge industries have very low labor costs. And they are highly automated productions uh, related to 3D printing. And uh, the vicinity of uh, con customers and developer is the key. And of course, the rule of the game. If we are looking uh, at these problems, we will see, uh, we will see that to some extent, uh, to some extent, I'd like to say that uh, now the focus of Karl Marx is realized uh, about the state, about the uh, elimination of state as an intermediary from transactions, from uh, arrangement of products and services. In this regard, the state is really going away. And uh, we see realizing a very funny thing. Uh, the state is, realizes both focuses of leave left philosophers and right philosophers uh, and utopists. The main idea of liberals from Hayek about private money is also realized in blockchain technology. So we see the state leaving uh, uh, from uh, the intermediary role in uh, transactions and in money moments. This is a very long process, but it still changes the situation. In my understanding, we see the dissolution of the social state system, because the richer the society, the more people would spend for themselves, for health, for education. And in this regard, the demand for different products of the social state uh, brings uh, out the state from the whole system. We used to say from the experience of 90s that if the state doesn't have money, uh, the private demand uh, comes to the stage, people start paying for education. But this is a very small episode of the economic crisis. The richer the society, the more people pay for education, health, and investment in themselves. And the, the demand, f this demand is growing in a richer society when people already 
saturated and satisfied their material needs and uh, they start buying social services without uh, a support of state and the support of uh, uh, state patterns. I believe that we will have to discuss many of these issues and one more aspect, I believe that the discussion about the state from the point of view of economics and uh, about economics from the point of view of state, there are two aspects and b which are both important, but they are different. One aspect is uh, the task for the nearest six years, the current uh, shortcomings, practical problems, and the uh, problems of their mitigation. There are also uh, other tasks for the horizon of 15 and 20 years, and uh, I don't think it's reasonable to uh, focus them from the point of view of modern trend. Very important uh, topic of the control and regulatory bodies' role. The, it is important in the horizon of five, six years but it's not uh, was no use to discuss it uh, in the horizon until 2035 because if we don't solve them quickly we don't have to lead this discussion further on we should uh, speak about the uh, the face of the state uh, the state governance uh, and what will be the demand for the state governments in the horizon of 20 years and I believe we will discuss all that we we'll start from uh, the survey it's a very fashionable thing now as a moderator I asked uh, uh, the speakers to speak more, to have two uh, surveys and not one. Uh, let's start from the first one and uh, look at the results, and then we will discuss uh, and we'll build up the discussion around these results. The voting will uh, be supported by mobile devices. I had discussions with organizations uh, if all people have iPhones or smartphones now, but I hope almost all of you have. So I uh, would now ask colleagues to tell you how the voting is organized. Okay, let's start voting. I remind you, dear guests, you should install the mobile application MFF 2017 from App Store or Google Play. In this application, please open uh, the tag program. In this section program, please find the current session, 10 a.m., new quality of uh, public administration as a factor of economic growth, hall number three. In this session on the screen, you will see the button survey. Please press it. In order to participate, you should enter the code. The code is 3949. 3949. And you see the uh, variance of answers. What's on your opinion is the main reason of uh, uh, low quality of uh, uh, state management? in Russia, equality of legislation, excessive state uh, control, low protection of uh, uh, freedoms, ignoring of new technological trends, uh, non-professional uh, officials, or corruption. So the voting is active. We give to you some time for making the vote. Uh, all our audience believes in technical progress. The voting is over. Colleagues, as you see, around third uh, is our technological trends. The second place, the quality of legislation. Generally speaking, uh, 
is, I believe, the third place is uh, protection of uh, rights and freedoms. Very interesting results, in my opinion, because still, in my understanding, the focus uh, of the majority of people and uh, participants of our session is made on uh, some objective trends, not on the situation uh, or the placement uh, of uh, one uh, mm, uh, public officials with others. And I hope that uh, the state regulation will uh, uh, play a higher role, but uh, surprisingly enough, it's on the last place. In this case, yeah, non-professionalism of all officials except myself. Yes, that's maybe. But uh, nevertheless, the focus on technological trends is uh, very interesting and very important. I uh, wanted to ask this question first uh, to Mr. Kudrin. Uh, and uh, these results uh, even uh, support my uh, a question. I'd like to ask Mr. Kunin to comment uh, how uh, the modern uh, public administration is uh, related to economic growth and technological opportunities uh, in uh, the uh, center of strategic developments. The main focus is made on uh, not only on problems of the current uh, administration, but on, to the, on the long-term vision uh, of this platform. Alexey Leonidovich, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I'd like to welcome all distinguished participants and congratulate you all to the day of financial worker. Financial workers bear a big uh, responsibility for the success of the economy. This is a very serious uh, work, a very professional one, uh, and uh, financial workers are very important people. Uh, the general question is uh, how the public administration impacts uh, e economic growth. And here I'd like to support the topic, the statement, although the state should move out of the business, but uh, the role as a system of governance, the, the role of the state as organizer of uh, the business, of principles of business, which is made through regulatory mechanism, through legislation, this role should even be stronger now. It will be stronger if state governments, if the public administration will uh, uh, answer more seriously to the challenges, to changing technologies. Today, public administration is uh, seriously lagging behind from uh, the demand of economics, uh, judging by the quality of uh, these services. So first of all, I'd like to say we don't have strategic planning and strategic management, although we have a law on strategic planning. The key targets, the key goals which we're setting for the long or short-term period are not uh, uh, fulfilled, and nobody is responsible for that. Uh, uh, people are punished for current uh, tasks and instructions from the president and uh, for the current uh, tasks and instructions from the government for two or three years. But for non-fulfillment of strategic tasks, no one is punished. We don't even have a system of continuous monitoring of strategic tasks. I uh, tried to find reporting for realization of our national projects, uh, and uh, I couldn't. We don't know uh, the results of uh, execution of key national projects uh, of our country. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing is uh, the current issues are, are considered to be more important than strategic uh, goals. And our survey has uh, shown that 80% or even over 80% of uh, uh, people um, are fo focused on their current uh, issues. And uh, most of people are involved not with their own functions, are not engaged with uh, their assignments, but uh, focus on some uh, immediate uh, uh, assignments that uh, go beyond the scope of work. So inefficiency of um, administration is the key problem. And uh, one of the major things is um, 
um, lagging behind uh, in terms of decision making. We have procedures. Uh, we have. Uh, um, the um, procedures that uh, say you can process uh, a demand or a request for a month or over a month, and these are very long terms. Business uh, are no longer uh, using this uh, format of work, and uh, our mm, well, the best practices in the world. Uh, uh, show that we can reduce time for decision making based on analysis. Uh, I know how officials uh, um, are mm, working. They are really working hard, so they have to delay things. So what can we do to uh, speed it up? Uh, would it uh, improve the situation if we accelerate this process? I mean, uh, if we can make decisions faster, it will uh, it will always uh, work. Uh, for example, you know we send a request, uh, we get a response, and then the decision is made. And this time can be reduced threefold or even fivefold, based on technical uh, achievements. Uh, for example, uh, Jack Ma, uh, um, you know there are so many uh, legends about him. Uh, he is working for. I be bank and uh, he established this slogan for his bank. So this uh, 310. This is the slogan. He set this goal uh, so that uh, this uh, uh, slogan can be achieved. What does it mean, 310? Three minutes to uh, do manually, uh, to complete the uh, request. So zero manual work. Everything has to be automated. And this transformed his business. I think uh, we are going to get rid of auditors in the near future, as well as of accountants, because all these so uh, happy holiday idea financiers. Um, yes, uh, we are going to uh, get involved uh, with more creative work. We're going to uh, be involved with creative decision making and, uh, for example, speaking about change management and uh, other um, uh, things that we have to address. So apart from strategic management, we have to clarify the functions of the state. And I'll just make a couple more points. When we started uh, digitalization in the last 10 years, um, we had more than 400 systems of electronic government for different ministers. We spent hundreds of billions people. But uh, the uh, major achievement is uh, uh, one uh, single uh, uh, center that uh, works as a one window shop. So we try to improve the interaction with the customers. But inside the government machinery, the process uh, uh, remained the same. And that's why it feels so chaotic and so many disruptions. And uh, so this is our um, uh, proposal from the Center for Strategic Developments. We have to uh, uh, improve this process, to streamline it, uh, to get rid of all the extra signatures, improve the inter-agency communication and interaction. So today we have to um, focus on life situation, for example, give a passport or provide a license or a certificate. And um, it means that we have to have an interagency group uh, and try to think how we can reduce different information flows to resolve that particular situation. And um, if uh, we do it uh, based on inter-ministry uh, or inter-agency uh, cooperation, we'll be able to reduce uh, the uh, timeline tenfold. We have to uh, get rid of uh, paper um, format. Uh, for example, recently my friend uh, received a lost luggage at the airport, and she said, I had to complete to fill in three copies of uh, uh, the documents. And I had to do it manually. Why do we have this? 
And today we see the same in, uh, in our work. And in other countries, um, all the governments try to reduce the number of people, the, uh, the volume of paperwork. For example, German Griff, another friend of mine, dreams that uh, the um, uh, cooperation with the government uh, uh, will be uh, immediate and very fast. For example, you get into the system and uh, uh, it uh, just happens automatically. But uh, German Griff wants uh, all communication go through Sberbank. Uh, you know, I'm uh, well. He is fighting for uh, you know his competitive advantages. Uh, it's true. If uh, the government uh, uh, doesn't do anything, we'll have to do it through. Sberbank. For example, when we calculated what effect it would bring in six years, you know, this digitalization of uh, public administration, we uh, realized that it would uh, not just uh, um, about inten um, intensification of officials' work, but uh, we can uh, reduce the number of officials working there and uh, uh, reduce uh, losses uh, by 0.3 percent of GDP. That's a great resource that can be redirected uh, to other objectives. Today, the government uh, has adopted the program uh, Digital Economy, and uh, this is a good thing. We have to uh, go through this, and it's about digitalization of all spheres and sectors of economy. But unfortunately, we don't have a section related to digitalization of public administration. So I don't know whether it's going to be part of this program or it'll be another kind of program, but as part of the reform of uh, public administration, I believe that we can use these technologies and new principles of government. And I'll be and will be able to turn to those um, average um, uh, figures uh, in terms of uh, numbers of state functions and supervisory authorities will be able to reduce uh, it uh, by twofold, and it will relieve the burden for businesses, and thus will help to um, improve decision making, uh, make this process much faster, and it will have a big positive impact on economic growth. Can I ask you a question? Can we get back to the uh, questions that we asked? If you don't mind, I want all the speakers to uh, ask uh, a question. How would you vote? For example, what about you? Uh, what do you think uh, was the main reason of the low quality uh, public um, uh, administration? Well, I think um, we miss one line here. For example, speaking about the organization of a public administration. We have to change it. We have to change the functions, the system of interaction between different uh, governmental authorities. But I would actually vote for the weak uh, protection of uh, human rights and freedoms. And it's not only about judicial um, uh, power. It's uh, about uh, interaction with customers. Because when we uh, communicate with the customers, with the citizens, we have to be partners. And we have to consider his or her interests. And the citizen can uh, have a right uh, to refuse to, to reject our decision. So it, we have to um, develop a new culture, a new culture of protection human rights, including judicial system. So this uh, link between the government and the citizen is a key um, in terms of um, uh, the requirement um, that uh, we put uh, for the public administration. So it's better not to, to talk to the government. You know, this was the joke that I heard, um, because the, you can always uh, uh, you will always uh, encounter problems. Uh, whatever we speak about, uh, property issues uh, or uh, payment for utilities. Uh, so you always experience problems whenever you uh, interact with the government. So uh, that's uh, a telling fact. Uh, it tells us uh, how low the quality of um, uh, uh, this interaction is. And uh, um, you know, you'll be tired of going from one 
one uh, um, office to another. So that's why I put it on the first place. Uh, but as to the other things, of course, uh, they are uh, important too. Um, uh, Mr. Shohin, uh, what uh, about you? What uh, what was your choice with regards to these questions? And uh, what does big business wait? Uh, for example, uh, improving the quality of public administration is not just the result of the government's work, because, you know, we can't expect it to do. It uh, can happen, but uh, it's not the main thing, because um, the uh, society has to uh, determine the demand for high quality administration. So what do you think? I. Uh, think when the moderators ask me questions, uh, it's uh, all about uh, big business. What does big business think about uh, something? But, uh, you know, RSPP is not only uh, uh, about big uh, business. It's not a uh, trade union of oligarchs. We have small and medium businesses in the region as well. So we think about creating favorable conditions and terms for all kinds of business. If small business feels good, then big business uh, will survive as well and will develop successfully. I voted for the first uh, um, question. It was about the quality of legislation. But in, in fact, the two uh, last questions could be united, lower um, professionalism of uh, officials and corruption. You know, if there's a corruption, uh, an official doesn't have to be professional. Uh, but, but also, if, a, if an official is uh, a professional, then he won't be be corruptible. So uh, we could uh, uh, put those two questions together. Let's get back to the questions. Let's uh, just look uh, at those questions again. And I wanted to mention uh, two things related to the quality of regulatory environment because it's a sensitive issue for business. Uh, it's uh, the it's about the mechanism of uh, business participation in uh, uh, legislation development and. Uh, mm, Six years ago, we um, uh, adopted uh, some procedures. So, if we get back to, uh, if we get back six years if, uh, ago, then uh, you know we could have uh, implemented those mechanisms that we developed six years ago. But it hasn't happened. In particular. Uh, the amendments uh, were excluded uh, um, uh, related to the amendments uh, that had to be considered during the second hearings. We can uh, discuss uh, uh, the laws, uh, draft laws for a long time, uh, but then it turns out that uh, w they can all be ignored uh, whenever the amendments are being discussed. Then. Uh, legal acts that are adopted to implement uh, high priority projects uh, for strategic development. Uh, then uh, it, it doesn't happen there. Uh, there is an accelerated procedure, but uh, it works uh, well only with uh, Alexander um, uh, Anatolievich that uh, um, uh, has a very uh, strict and rigid uh, uh, process uh, um, for revising and reviewing all kinds of legal um, acts uh, and regulations. But as to other um, high priority projects, it all depends on the coordinator and uh, senior officials, so there's no unified system. On the one hand, we were very positive because the State Duma uh, procedure allows us to uh, review the uh, draft laws uh, prepared for the second hearing. And. Uh, Again, you can uh, approve everything during the first reading, but during the second uh, hearing, the second reading, you know, you can um, make amendments that would be completely, that would make everything completely different. So uh, we have to review this again, and there's a lot of work to be done here. and. Uh, it's very important that this uh, mechanism that uh, helps uh, business uh, 
work. For example, we don't have any limitations. Uh, it's not just that big uh, uh, business organizations uh, take part in this. It's an open business procedure. But we haven't uh, improved it yet uh, during the last six years. Recently, uh, one in, one out mechanism has been adopted. And uh, it means that we have to, if we introduce some uh, um, uh, law, we have to remove uh, something. Uh, um, from the legislation to make sure no uh, burden um, is increased on business. So how do we evaluate uh, or assess the situation? We have to consider administrative or financial implications, uh, positive implications uh, if we remove certain uh, regulations. Uh, uh, so it's a good mechanism, but uh, it doesn't really work effectively. I can mention other mechanisms as well. For example, we have a mechanism to um, evaluate uh, actual uh, effect. Uh, so, um, but, uh, you know, this uh, good uh, promising mechanism hasn't really been launched yet. So it's not a working mm -hmm. instrument. If we speak about the instrumental issues, I can say that uh, if we make this mechanism effective, uh, then uh, um, uh, this dream will come true. P point uh, three uh, percent of GDP uh, will uh, be added, will be received. Uh, my next question is, um, um, uh, for the next uh, speaker, I guess uh, being a member of the government, uh, you c carried out uh, policies uh, uh, related to that. So uh, what can you say about the results, uh, speaking about the last six years, and uh, how do you see the priorities for the next six years? Well. Speaking about this survey, it's really difficult uh, to uh, identify one uh, factor. But I would vote for uh, the uh, weak uh, system of uh, human rights protection um, and uh, low quality legislation. Because, you know, we can't protect human rights if our uh, legislation is not effective and uh, uh, far from perfect. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, there's a low quality of technical uh, support uh, and corruption that uh, disrupts uh, uh, priorities, strategies, and values. Uh, I can't ignore this. Uh, and. Um, I, I'm happy that uh, uh, it uh, hasn't uh, uh, received most voices, most votes. And uh, then unprofessional officials is another very big reason. So all these questions are extremely important. So we can't just focus on one and identify it as the main thing to improve the quality of public management. We have to develop a mix of uh, different mechanisms. It's not possible to ignore one of these priorities, of course. But uh, we should say that uh, public administration is not an amorphous system. It's quite clear. It can be um, disintegrated by, into very clear blocks. First, this is providing services from uh, uh, the, the state to the business and to the uh, citizen. It's obvious that um, quality improvement means implementation of new technologies. A lot has been done for the last 15 years. Um, that was started by 
the team of Gref and Kudrin in the beginning of notice and uh, MFCE, the multifunction center uh, in uh, the model of one window for citizens without collecting all papers that um, seem to be a fantastic solution. For 15 years, only now we can reap the uh, results. Only now we see the high quality understanding of this uh, topic. Now we speak not about the development of infrastructure, the number of uh, windows. We speak about the waiting time in the queue and uh, our task is to reduce it from the average of 20 minutes to 12 minutes. This is a lot. It's a significant progress. And for that, uh, the state needed with regard to the work of previous governments uh, and the government uh, I'm working with, 15 years were needed. Uh, all regions were involved. People are simple people. When they come to this new system of relation to the state, they see another face of the state. It has become client-oriented, client-based. They see new technologies which allow to move as much as possible to online when all these services uh, are provided using internet in a remote mode. And uh, we need to change legislation for that to ensure legally, uh, legally supported activities uh, in a distant mode. The question of services here is uh, uh, obviously depending on technological platforms. The second question, what are other areas uh, of our management? We manage strategies, and we should say that indeed we have too many strategies, but um, the strategies of the global development, which uh, would be uh, uh, mutually reporting and mutually connected by a, a very long horizon of the strategies, which uh, would be split not only by officials, which would be shared by the community, by business. This would be the strategy which could combine the whole state, the whole the development of the state. I hope that such strategic management will come up very soon, and uh, many expert platforms, including uh, uh, Center of Strategic Development, do a lot to uh, create such strategy. The second thing which we're managing are resources. We have three main resources, money, people, and time. And here it's absolutely obvious that uh, improvement of the state management uh, uh, quality should be based on the use of new technologies. And I'd like to have a few messages for you just to exacerbate or to start discussion. Implementation of new technologies and uh, speeding up processes of decision making has two uh, sides, two sides of the medal. When Mr. Kudrin uh, worked in the government in 2004, 5,000 uh, regulatory acts and laws were adopted on the level of the government, which regulated the uh, work of the whole state system and the life of the society. Currently, 30,000 of uh, such documents are adopted. What uh, happened? Uh, the quality of uh, the state improved by five times, or what, proportionally to the uh, uh, applicable legislative acts or regulators. And I warn, I'd like to warn you from uh, this uh, high speed. In this case, uh, we will just adopt not 30,000, but uh, 90,000, and business will not have chance to adopt to it. Citizens will not have a chance to understand all these changes and adopt to them. We shouldn't speed up processes if these processes don't lead to higher quality. Mr. Kudrin mentioned uh, the strengthening of the role of the state in the future. I believe that the state uh, takes so many uh, responsibility on the federal and, and the regional level, it's very hard to work. If we include, uh, uh, include, even increase it and take additional responsibilities, and if we take not 30,000 uh, uh, draft acts, but 90,000, if we uh, 
create a high-speed machine which will uh, roll out uh, draft laws. Uh, would it be a, an order? No, it will be a chaos. Uh, the state should get rid first of uh, the functions which are excessive, to give them out to business, to make the state compact, only focused on the very main priorities. Without that, uh, it wouldn't be possible to mm, mm, build an efficient uh, state machine. So the first priority is to implement not only technological pr uh, technological processes, but first we should split where the state should be and where it shouldn't be. This is the first step. Besides that, you may know that we need to make the public administration more flexible. Now we are all and regions and federations are sitting in the, in the, in the pits. What is flexibility? Flexibility of managing resources uh, the state is uh, uh, having. These are people, money, and time. What happens in the reality? We are managing people. It's very hard to hire a person for this state position, for a public position. It takes from six to nine months. And practically, it's not possible to fire the person. What is What are the speeds we are talking about? What are the new technologies? We don't have even the flexibility of our management. What happens to finance? I very like the Ministry of Finance. We all like it. We should only love it. And I ask the colleagues, the discussion of for four or five last years, we have lots of costs, non-efficient expenses, for example, expenses for high-ranking uh, pro officials uh, providing with uh, car transport. Are these officials ready to get rid of these transport? But in this case, um, uh, then we should stimulate them somehow, provide additional bonuses for that. So we should share what the state would uh, save on these inefficient expenses and partially, uh, partially uh, uh, reimburse them. No, it's not possible. I've been asking for four years the financial uh, Ministry of Finance to bring it from one uh, item to another, to save uh, billions of rubles for the state, but uh, nothing changes. Budgetary planning system, which was built by Mr. Kudrin, unfortunately is not flexible. It has to be transformed drastically. We should give more uh, opportunities, provide transparency, and to give more opportunities to the governors to uh, uh, use resources to bring them from one uh, uh, item of course to another. Uh, minister, today minister is not able to transform uh, one cost to another uh, by optimizing, by saving something. So there are no stimulus, no incentive for efficient operation. The financial system should be flexible, fast, and convenient. And I hope that the Ministry of Finance in this government and the next government is able to build a service model. Uh, today, we have, don't have a service model. We have a bookkeeping model. It doesn't uh, reflect the uh, requirements of the 21st century. And the financial forum, I, I'm sure, will help us. Uh, the question to Mrs. Orlova now. And I'd like to start from our traditional question. What would be your choice? What would be your vote in this survey? And. Uh, what else I wanted to ask, the position of a governor is a transitional position. From one uh, side, this is the sacrifice to the state, the, recip the rep recipient. But on the other hand, this is a source of the state power. Uh, last week, I uh, had a talk to a government from one of our regions. He asked me a very, for a very interesting survey. The question is, uh, what is the share in uh, the regional uh, authorities, the share of uh, people in the regional authorities is taken by um, communication with federal authorities, answering questions, correspondence, letters, realization of instructions and uh, uh, tasks, uh, Mr. Kudrin mentioned. When I uh, was part of the supervisory boards of a few banks, I see that the share of uh, bank employees uh, involved in the supervision is growing, is booming, and the average banks, it is more than a half. Uh, so these are people who are involved in fulfilling instructions of the regulator. 
on providing controlling functions, everything which is relate, rela uh, related to compliance. Svetlana Yurovna, Mrs. Orlova, please, how does it look from uh, the point of view of your region, Vladimir region? That would be one first, uh, my first question. And the second question, uh, yesterday night uh, I uh, had a call from Mr. Haritonian uh, complaining that uh, he was ill and he couldn't come. But we had this dialogue about the region is a wonderful high technology production except everything else which we know about Vladimir region there are also high tech productions so I didn't know they exist in our country and why are they in your region it's just a good luck or what first of all uh, using this opportunity I'd like to congratulate you all to the day of financial worker I'd like to stress that we have a stable financial system budgetary code and tax code are working the time is coming something should be changed the role of the Treasury and uh, moving to the Treasury uh, execution is also an efficient method of uh, promoting our country what would be my choice first of was of course the excessive state control uh, law protection for freedoms and rights and ignoring uh, new technological trends while organizing the system of public administration. If we speak about the innovation, innovative things, our uh, region is in the third place. We have 28% uh, of all products can be considered as innovative. Now let's uh, say what uh, we are doing good. First, in your region or in the country, we are three, three. We are on the third place now. So I speak about our region. We have a lot of innovative products. As in the position of the government, and what are the results? How do we support small and medium enterprises, new technologies, high tech technologies, business navigators? You shouldn't go anywhere to any. Uh, to, to, to any official, you should enter these business navigators and you understand what is happening in uh, the industry. We have uh, uh, the growth of investments. What is Generium? Generium is the very new uh, production enterprise, biotechnologies, production of medicine, and of course, without help of government and president, we wouldn't be uh, in these markets. And uh, the letter was signed personally by President Putin and these are factors against hemophilia, uh, new medicine for children against tuberculosis. This was a very serious problem for Rush, Russia last year. New workshop uh, opened, 6.5 billion investments from Sberbank, and um, more than 50 scientists who came back from abroad and uh, work in our region. This is a full cycle, very nice and uh, beautiful place. But the problem of arrangement of land when you recomplete it from federal to regional level, of course, this is a bureaucracy problem. We still have them. But we are helping to this enterprise, not only to this enterprise, but we have equal treatment of all our enterprises. Now, the government. The government have become more open, and we should stress it. Information technologies are acting. The management goes uh, also from the federal level, of financing federal municipal uh, programs. Of course, it makes you an additional incentive for, because you see control and efficiency of uh, using budgetary funds uh, and uh, reporting periods and so on. Next uh, moment, which is very important, is making order, making order in the tariff policy. and. Uh, Mr. Kudrin, the uh, calculation centers we have, there are no problems. People understand what is the quality of the service. It's quite open all. You can come to visit us, can to visit our region, and uh, we uh, made a very good order in this segment. So we spent four years for that. We reduced uh, energy resources by 2%, 88 new uh, boiler centers. So we covered all gas debts. We received 2.2 billion from Gazprom to develop eight uh, sport facilities. But this topic is very hard in other regions. And here we should be more open in these issues. We shouldn't be afraid of it because there are warranty uh, suppliers uh, which uh, are not willing to be open. Second moment, business uh, can feel some false approach if you have different approach or double standards. But if you have equal approaches, equal treatment, there will be no problem. I'd like to 
also stress the following thing. The uh, industrial fund, thank you to Mr. Komisarov, we found it uh, on national projects when we presented, when the president presented the national project uh, and uh, Everyone uh, learned about uh, Commissar from this open moment. He uh, came to the industrial fund. We won eight projects, and Vladimir region is so big, but we concentrated ourselves. We set the task. We have lots of young people, youth. 35% in administration are young people. We have a project office. Sometimes we are taking risk with them, but uh, you can't go anywhere without risk. And this industrial fund allowed us to increase uh, the volume of production by uh, to, to one hundred uh, percent, we uh, still keep up the indicators of export, and the fund show us that showed us that we can't uh, make all projects successful. That's why we made our protection office so training of personnel. It's not possible without it. We trained it with you, with Graf and Skolkova, and we will keep spending money on that. Why excessive? We should get rid of it, of course. It's has a strong impact. I can cite lots of examples when business is suffering from that. And uh, I try to protect business without fearing anything. And anyone also with the bodies which are quite powerful, uh, we are uh, in active discussions with them. Now, what about structures? So, Poro Rossiya, RSPP, Dilavaya Rossiya. And Mr. Titov, protection of entrepreneurs. They also start working more efficiently, more open. Nobody said anything about an infrastructure. We're not uh, going to develop without good infrastructure. You just forgot about it. The municipal environment, uh, good roads, lighting. Uh, when uh, the grandma told me I uh, boiling uh, the soup uh, for four hours because uh, of uh, shortages of power and uh, outages of power, because no one invested in renovation of cables. An investor enters, a big investor enters in our region and will invest more 300 million. And for the person, it doesn't matter. All services should be available, emphasis centers. Thank you very much for that. It's a very interesting initiative and good initiative. It has become to work efficiently, and the population started to feel it. They start to like it. They understand a lot, and they know a lot about it. So I believe. This openness, um, migration to digit. I would like to ask Mr. Abizov to, for help. We will then c can uh, solve the problem with excessive uh, government control. And uh, I'm ready to take these experiments and trials on the example of my re of our region. I will claim, warn them. I will be first to move to the digit not to squeeze out uh, small and million business 15 times uh, unnecessary checks and reviews and inspections, but as a result, nothing. You understand what I'm f talking about? Without, in, in terms of business, nothing, but too many checks, too many inspections uh, for on order, of course. Sometimes it's the real life. And when you are more prepared, when uh, you work in a digital environment, when you have a project office, uh, I look at uh, mono states. You shouldn't take him uh, 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 just red handed. Uh, he knows uh, the growth points, the investments, what are the problems. Uh, but previously, we didn't have any plans, no houses on our balance, no budget. They didn't know about it. By the way, we have a balanced out budget. We practically don't have debts. And uh, my deputy, Mr. Kuzin, uh, um, he knows about it. We uh, re make a very strong control about it. Uh, we should understand that for the state money, we should work very efficiently. Now a few more things about uh, taxes. We have a very good taxation system, which allows us, by g gathering all entrepreneurs, to tell everything. The time has gone. We pay everything. 
but unfortunately still um, they uh, give uh, payments and salaries in envelopes and we have to speak about it openly and sometimes taxation authorities do not work effectively for example I would like to meet uh, with Mr. Mishustin and ask him to deliver a workshop um, uh, for uh, businesses and um, uh, tax authorities uh, um, of course technology is, is a major factor we are in the third place and uh, we have lots of innovative products and uh, those that have innovative products will make a breakthrough on the market that's for sure thank you well to uh, Alexei Komisarov has been mentioned twice we are not finishing our discussion because we're going to have an export. So, Alexei, I wanted to ask you about your experience related to the business and uh, work with authorities. Uh, and so my first question, how did you vote? And if you could elaborate on your comprehensive experience, because you, you worked with both parties, both sides. Yes, thank you for introduction. And I can t tell you uh, what uh, uh, I was shocked when I uh, uh, moved uh, from being an entrepreneur uh, to an official. And actually, this uh, determined my voting today. I wanted to vote for technological trends because it's extremely relevant uh, for me but um, um, uh, I guess we were just six people uh, that um, voted for excessive uh, government control six uh, percent six votes yeah but uh, that's almost the same six votes and 6.9 percent uh, the second line and uh, why do I think um, it's very important because this excessive uh, uh, government control is felt not only in business work. Um, like Svetlana mentioned, uh, it can be a very difficult process, but also inside government structures. And I was really impressed when I uh, began to work uh, for the government, unlike entrepreneurs that are always searching for what they can do, um, officials are um, trying to look for why something cannot be done. Uh, because uh, it's all about uh, high risk and uh, high responsibility. But uh, uh, I think it's just too much because uh, n not uh, we, we, uh, you know, we don't have a right uh, um, to make a mistake. You know, it's not a right to make a criminal act. It's a right to mistake. And uh, no official has this right to mistake. And the price of these mistakes uh, will be much less than those uh, benefits that we could get if we uh, looked at what can be done, what we should do to develop further. I think uh, it would be very interesting uh, to topic for research uh, where we could compare different things uh, based on statistics. Recently, we went to Singapore uh, with an educational program uh, uh, to trying to learn uh, um, what Singapore government did, how they worked. And I can see some of my colleagues here in this audience that took part in that uh, project. And uh, we got a lot of useful information, of course. But you know, I wasn't impressed by Singapore government. I wasn't impressed by their achievements. But I was impressed by our guys, you know, they were very serious uh, men and women taking senior positions. They actually turned out to be much more advanced, much more educated uh, than uh, those uh, um, that um, uh, were introduced to us as the role model. Uh, and we are not uh, really ready to do what they do. Uh, if only we focused more on uh, success stories, on positive cases, uh, uh, it would be better for all of us, uh, for the whole country. 
Another thing that uh, we saw in Singapore, there were many things. Uh, there, th actually, there's a very high level of trust between uh, the people and the state. Uh, we don't have this. Uh, and uh, that's why uh, uh, we have this investment losses and uh, uh, you know, the image of a public worker should be supported. Um, you know, uh, it uh, should become more real. It should uh, have not just support, but uh, should be. Um, we should build uh, its reputation. You know, we hear uh, so many bad stories uh, from mass media, um, but uh, also we um, uh, hear a lot about entrepreneurs. There are two bad guys, an official and an entrepreneur, if we read mass media. You know, we should support the positive image of an entrepreneur. I was speaking about it a lot, and I never thought that I would mentioned the same about uh, um, public officials, uh, public servants, and uh, um, no matter how strange it may sound, but both these groups now um, are on the same uh, uh, on the same side. So if we don't change this approach, if we ignore this, uh, the quality of public administration won't uh, get better just because there's no trust and uh, no will. Uh, and, and no way uh, for this good, uh, um, effective, ambitious people to reach their goals. Thank you. You know, now I wanted to ask uh, a question. Since Alexei mentioned Singapore, maybe we should talk about the role of international experience. You know, international experience is a delicate issue. We have a representatives from International Monetary Fund and um, the World Bank. You know, macroeconomic stabilization is a painful thing, but uh, intellectually it's quite simple. Uh, how can we uh, move uh, from uh, high inflation to just from three-digit inflation to one-digit inflation? How can we balance the budget? It's actually clear, and we understand how the countries uh, work here. But if we speak about the reform, Form. And, um, uh, you know, it's much more difficult now uh, to work here. And Kudrin, Mr. Kudrin and Mr. Graf um, faces real challenges, especially if we speak about judicial uh, uh, power and uh, the quality of public administration. Uh, you know, it develops fast both with corruption and without corruption. It's just like with, uh, um, you know, capitalism and socialism. With capitalism, um, one human exploits the other human, but uh, and it's um, uh, contrary in, uh, in socialism. But anyway, both uh, positive and negative experience are important. For example, Mikhail initiated this trip to Singapore, and there was a discussion um, uh, about Singapore experience, whether it could be borrowed, whether it could be applied to Russian context. Then another example that we like is um, Malaysia. And um, um, some of the um, uh, agencies um, are going to go to Malaysia in order to exchange uh, the experience. And th there's no other country that uh, um, uh, received the sovereign fund, but it, uh, everything was stolen there. And a young guy, the head of the government, uh, you know, um, was. Um, using this money, uh, drank a lot, did what he wanted during oil boom. Everything is described in The Economist. Uh, so it was uh, quite interesting to uh, consider that experience as well. So let's uh, um, talk about the conclusions or les lessons learned that uh, you brought from Singapore. Uh, you know, speaking about international experience, it's true. It's extremely important. We have to 
understand all the contemporary trends in um, uh, government, in governance and uh, public administration, and we have to compare ourselves with best practices and best examples so that we could use the objective uh, uh, indicators uh, that show where we are in terms of different uh, areas. But we can't just uh, um, copy international experience blindly. We have to understand it. We have to compare our um, uh, specificity with uh, uh, that context. And we have to select uh, universal tools. Uh, uh, predominantly, um, for example, uh, international technologies can be used internationally on the global level. But as to systemic issues of public administration uh, and some other issues should be developed based on the area specifics, um, on the cultural specifics of the country, on the industry structure. We have to be really careful there. So uh, it's not only about uh, applying the Singapore experience or New Zealand, Australia experience. You know, New Zealand and Australia have progressed in terms of competition um, more than others. And um, we have to analyze the experience of uh, advanced uh, cutting edge corporations because, uh, you know, public administration, no matter how specific it is, uh, in the 21st century, it can use uh, uh, those instruments that are used uh, by best corporations. And actually, you know, there are very close links between the corporate uh, business and government uh, administration. And the people are going through this career cycle when people, some um, work for private business, then they work for the government. and it it helps to improve the government culture, the public administration culture. And uh, it's um, applicable both to corporate culture and uh, uh, the uh, uh, public administration culture. And it enriches the uh, experience uh, of us. So we have uh, to consider all the uh, trends. Uh, uh, we have to uh, consider all the indicators uh, and take it into account. For example, there's a great uh, example uh, of Tatarstan and Moscow. For example, these are two uh, subjects of the uh, constituencies of uh, the Russian C Federation that are trying to accumulate the best uh, uh, experiences uh, um, um, that appear in the world. And they have uh, um, the resources they uh, um, want to um, use and apply that experience. Some um, times uh, we understand that universal models work very well, but also individual decisions have to be made. You know, a Russian official um, from Russian classic literature uh, has uh, their own pluses and minuses, uh, advantages and uh, weaknesses and um, uh, strengths. Um, just a second. Yes, uh, um, I'm not, uh, even though um, I'm not a financier, uh, I uh, focus on economic uh, history. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's no other practical thing uh, um, like uh, uh, this. But uh, the most uh, corrupted officials uh, were uh, um, uh, judges, and uh, those people that were working for the Minister of Finance were less corrupted. And this was described in many uh, uh, books. Uh, I just couldn't but mention this. Uh, I visited Singapore. I sent my young um, people team uh, to work with uh, uh, public administration authorities. It's true that uh, um, everything is open there and transparent, a great level of digitalization. But Mr. Strashnov was the leader of um, our po po post mail post office. Uh, we were uh, working together with him to improve uh, post office services because uh, uh, it was so important for the society. But I couldn't understand why such a professional was uh, removed. You know, sometimes we have uh, uh, such good people um, uh, and then uh, uh, such good people disappear. Um, 
suddenly. So I wanted Mr. Abizov, uh, I wanted to ask uh, Mr. Abizov about it. You know, he, is, uh, he was uh, such a progressive person. He was uh, doing great work. He improved uh, the uh, work of post office. He improved the surfaces. Uh, it's just a you know, cursed uh, position. Uh, Dmitry Strashnov, uh, up to now, was the head of uh, Commission for Telecommunications uh, and uh, PR, um, uh, and he's working for uh, RSPP. Uh, yes, it's good, but still, I have to mention this. Sometimes uh, very educated, very effective officials, uh, you know, who began to change the work um, to reduce the load and burden um, on um, the work workers, uh, but uh, then uh, they disappear. Yes, I wanted to take part uh, in this discussion related to personnel uh, resources, uh, HR resources. Uh, and uh, first of all, I wanted to comment uh, on certain things. I mentioned digitalization and uh, digitalization in public administration will solve many problems, will optimize the processes and work between different agencies and ministries, uh, would help to reduce uh, this uh, time uh, required for decision making. And uh, uh, the Center for Strategic Development developed a concept um, of a state as a platform. I mentioned uh, the um, uh, characteristics of it. Um, basically, it means that you can use a phone or a computer uh, to uh, receive the services that uh, you need, and it's an automated process. Or uh, he or she takes part in a dialogue uh, um, automatically, and he, they don't have to go anywhere, they don't have to wait for ages. It all happens here and now, in real time. And it's all realistic. It's We can do this. It's possible. And uh, I w wanted to mention that we have already um, made some achievements. For example, um, uh, the federal treasury is uh, uh, working very well. And uh, actually, um, they have all the characteristics of digital platforms. For example, they... Uh, uh, work with uh, tax uh, payers, uh, uh, and um, I wanted to mention another platform. It's a, a stock market. So these three financial institutions um, are important um, in my work. For example, Alibaba um, um, uh, performs 180,000 operations for the citizens, and the stock exchange is working uh, just like that uh, because our stock exchange works with the same rates. And Mr. Griff uh, promised uh, to build uh, up another platform based on Sberbank that uh, um, would uh, perform not just financial uh, operations, but other kind of operations, including um, uh, pu public services. So this was just my brief comment. I, I believe that uh, we are uh, working uh, uh, both with state authorities and the citizens, and it means that our control authorities, our supervisory authorities won't have to um, control this process uh, just because there'll be in enough uh, financial data um, that will show us what happens there. And uh, then there'll be an algorithm telling us whether we have to focus and uh, inspect certain things. And this is quite realistic uh, to implement uh, in the next six years. These uh, um, solutions will warn enterprises if there are certain deviations. And so um, they won't have to, you know, um, go to court, uh, sue, take legal procedures, go through so many instances. And, you know, uh, the court uh, does not always make fair decisions. Uh, so we can make a revolution in public administration and improve the relations uh, with the customers and uh, uh, government authorities. Another comment that I wanted to share 
is related to uh, the changing uh, of the role uh, of uh, signature. For example, when I was uh, um, working there, um, uh, we had 60 days uh, um, to change that uh, um, uh, signature. Now we have 14 days only, and um, we no longer have this problem. For example, once the budget is approved, all the lines uh, have to be uh, approved by the legislative assembly. Then uh, um, can the executive authorities change this? Yes, easily. For example, uh, we're going to um, uh, send these resources not for health but for education. So these things have to be decided by uh, legislative authorities. Should we expand the authorities of them? Um, um, so we have to uh, be flexible here. but. It, it has to be to a certain extent, uh, and Ministry of Finance and Treasury um, basically executes the will of uh, legislative uh, authorities. For example, uh, here you can change something because you have these rights, uh, but uh, you can't do this in some other um, uh, things. Uh, so you have to ask for permission. I don't uh, agree with disagree with you that the role in the budgetary process is uh, set and should be complied because this is uh, the budget and the money of taxpayer. I just cited a simple example with uh, payment uh, payments and funds uh, for cars. It means three years uh, for three years I couldn't solve it. You can tell me that the system is efficient, but I uh, said a simple question. Please take away expenses for cars for officials which don't need them and they are ready to get rid of these cars of this they don't need these cars and uh, and then and by by taxation statement or what uh, they don't need it or I I heard it and maybe in a specific situation we need to investigate it specifically I just mentioned this um, inflexibility of the budget system which exists now, which uh, to improve the quality of state supply should be addressed. You are arguing about different things. One about the, the re re tra transfer of, uh, of items. And the second thing which Kudrin mentioned is a very political decision. It's not a problem to take us from the officials. It's not a problem of the budget breakdown. This is a pro problem of the lifestyle. You know, uh, we are facing Another uh, left socialist forecast in 1960, Mr. Khrushchev uh, said that there won't be one of the personal cars under communism because you don't need them because the public transport will be so good. And uh, and um, yeah, the, the, about the planes, you see it in Rezan and you listen that in Irkutsk there's meat in uh, in the store. You play, you bought the plane and you're first in line for this meat. So maybe uh, it turned out that sitting in uh, your own your own car, then the taxi is so cheaper and so easier. And in this case, the technology push on us that in some years everyone would agree that it's easier to take a taxi than to have personal car to park it and to to, to maintain it and so on and so forth. The will be naturally uh, naturally solved. It will be just impossible to drive the roads uh, because of so many cars. I uh, um, uh, also having another message. The question of Mikhail needs to be addressed in a specific way. And I spent another two minutes speaking about the quality of uh, our work, of our officials. And I'd like to um, agree with Mr. Komisarov that the quality and the competence of and the culture of our F, uh, officials play a key role. And one of the main problems today is the mistrust inside the system of power, rechecking, re-reviewing of uh, decisions of each other. That's the problem. That's why we are expanding regulatory bodies, which is additional uh, burden, additional uh, taxation. And when we recheck everything many times, in this case, we're lagging behind from Singapore, from China, from other countries in terms of trust, both to the public authorities and to persons in the society. We have two serious 
obstacles to the way to the fast economic growth. Of course, the authorities should take measures to be more transparent, to work quicker, and I support Svetlana. In this regard, we should be more open as in Singapore. We don't have access to information. Uh, there is a law now that uh, there should be surveys uh, for the interests to evaluate all state bodies, all public bodies. And the uh, uh, Federal uh, Security Service carries it out, but the data are confidential. And sometimes ministries provide some positive pieces from these surveys about themselves. But we do know them. I know them. And uh, I know this information. I react on it. Maybe you have this information. But uh, the law was taken for the sake of the society. The society should evaluate it. We can argue about methodology. The methodology should be available of all these surveys and myself as uh, I, I worked at uh, I worked on it in the Ministry of Interior they just uh, pilot on on the Federal Security Service and that's all now coming back to the work of uh, the um, public administration we should uh, introduce what is already been introduced in the public in corporations uh, the full cycle uh, hiring process employment process someone for uh, the fixed time, someone for the term contract, or uh, to use the, the mixed, pro, uh, mixed uh, regime. We should split uh, regimes and changes. We should start uh, change management. We should introduce departments on change management specifically. The changes in the management system should be continuous. Uh, it obviously would bother us all the time, but no, some processes will be optimized continuously in this regard. Even in the public uh, service and uh, public uh, authorities in each ministry, there should be hundreds uh, or thousands of continuous changes when a certain declaration, certain algorithm will be continuously simplified on request of uh, citizens on our evaluations where it's possible to do. Today, we should do it continuously. So the change management in uh, the public service should be continuous. A continuous function, a stable function. This this would be a project-based approach. If you take some process, you simplify it, or to complicate it, it made it more sophisticated. In this case, we should think about if there are new processes in the society coming up. So I mentioned about the openness. I mentioned, I said a few words about accumulating competences um, to be realized by officials, by public servants. And the continuous learning every year is important for public servants. In uh, our system, there are changes of that kind that we should train, retrain, refresh every year officials. They should spend every year one or two weeks uh, on the refreshers course in the higher school of economics, in Run Hicks, in the higher school of management. So I agree with the evaluations in terms of change management. In terms of change management, we need the uh, rapid deployment forces for change management, high-skilled uh, specialists who are able to analyze also under the security service. No, in each ministry, they should uh, make up this team of professional experts which would, who would help them to change the order of their work. And I mentioned uh, culture and initiatives, position of officials in the system. I repeat again, KPIs uh, to be set, the uh, key performance indicators to be evaluated by, they should be continuous. I can openly, I can fairly say, I evaluated the efficiency, the performance of different people, uh, of different employees, uh, personally, but now there are, there are already automated monitoring systems for that. There are commissions uh, who are reviewing it and asking why it's not so efficient as it could be. This is the very important factor today, the rotation also, the turnover. As a result of all these measures and the improvement of culture, I believe that if we set this task within six years, we can solve the problem of corruption in Russia in principle. It will still be somewhere, but it won't. Uh, it stop. It will stop to be a problem, a major problem. I believe that today is possible because of uh, the availability of uh, practices and technical opportunities which we can use. Thank you. I'd like to say 
still uh, it's very important i can sign up or under everything what mr kudrin mentioned but it's not possible to realize it in the today's budgetary system i tell you we had a very long discussion yesterday in the ministry of finance Alexey Leonidovich says that state control should be technological control based on the new information trends and technologies, opportunities in order to prevent and avert risks, mitigate damage, and to make this control comfortable for the counterparty. I absolutely agree. And with Mr. Shokhin, we are dealing today with the system of control, and uh, I know all the details about it. Very recently, there was a decision of government. All uh, vehicles were equipped with uh, tachographs and uh, devices to control security and safety, and dozens of millions of rubles were spent for that because it was made on the account of the transporters. For now, the data from these devices are not coming in automated mode to the state system. They are being read episodically because 6,000 inspectors of Rostransnadzor should just have flash drives on which we should spend 250 million rubles a year or communication channels, which would cost even more. So for the inspector of Rostechnadzor, who works with this high-tech tool to uh, provide flash drives, I can't get money from the state for that, 200 million. But the economics spent for installation of these distant control devices, dozens of millions of rubles. And so we start the discussion. So you should reduce the personnel in, in Ras Nord. You can spend this money. As soon as you uh, reduce it, you will get the money. And so that was the uh, the circle and going around discussion. What should we do first? Should we cut uh, conspexes then first or uh, introduce informatization and digitalization and to reduce the number of people? But someone should execute the state functions until we uh, introduce all these novelties. But the Treasury and the Federal S Taxation Service are the most high-tech and advanced uh, departments in, uh, our, uh, in our country. But they have very nice financing. But Transnazor doesn't have 200 million. We should increase funding uh, of introduction of new technologies. So I ask Mr. Kudrin, to, with his authority, to get at least 200 million from Ministry of Finance for flash drives. We are experts. We can only recommend. So please do not uh, diminish your role. Dear colleagues, uh, I had one more topic for discussion, which Alexei Leonidovich outlined in the form of uh, preparation of um, stuff for the but we don't have time for that, unfortunately. But I should give the floor to uh, Mrs. Nesterenko. I have the floor. I have the microphone because this uh, he, she's the organizer of our victories. I don't know uh, whether it's the finalization of our discussion or not. But if yes, I'd like to express my gratitude to all distinguished participants for their participation and uh, these experts in uh, Treasury and taxation and finance. And that uh, maybe was uh, uh, the prerequisite of these serving results. Those people who are involved in state government, they count uh, very strongly on the changing of technologies and business processes, which means the different qualification, which means there is no corruption, there is no communication with those who can be uh, charged with uh, uh, corruption or bribery. So the, the flesh drives will be bought. That's, that's fine. I hope to, to, for the discussion. And uh, first and second, all kind of changes. I speak only about Treasury and Ministry of Finance and in some part about the tax uh, authorities because we work uh, uh, on very business process, many, many business processes together. Before any novelties and introductions, we uh, study in detail best practices all over the world in the subject matter and in businesses. And uh, we envy very much uh, the fast uh, speed of changes which goes there, the number of approvals in our case, number of uh, controlling bodies, number of stages we should go over to make any change, it's, it, it makes the whole thing quite unreal. 
as soon as we do it, as soon as we pass it, making changes, the world is changing further. There are new technologies. And uh, even though I come with Shuvalov, uh, Igor Ivanovich, I'll tell him, we spent uh, some money for the new solution. But now a new solution is demonstrated to us, which is more efficient. But, but uh, we, we can't do it because we've already spent some million of rubles, what should we do? Shall we drag this solution further on? But there's no mechanism which uh, could be implemented here. Um, and which, we, 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 we don't have the solution for accepting some, some error and moving on. Sberbank is your example. The, why does it all happen in Sberbank? Because they worked on some topic. They say, OK, that's the obsolete thing. If we, they didn't implement it, then they move on. But any solution, in our case, it's the prosecutor's office. 1.5 billion rubles inefficient means on the law, the prosecutor's office. And so people are afraid of signing for it. But uh, anything, uh, nothing will be possible if we don't do it. Uh, what's the, civil, the difference between the administrative and civil right? Civil right, uh, everything is uh, possible which is not restricted. Administrative, which is written, you should abide by. That's the difference, and we can't do anything about it. This is a very serious issue we should address. You think we don't lead discussions with the parliament uh, to change a little bit the balance uh, of uh, parliament and government uh, authorities. All these discussions are being uh, continued every year, and we are continuously told, OK, I'm not going to continue about the parliament. Again. The platform-based solutions, it's uh, our goal um, we are moving to. But in terms of platforms, any platform is based on some pillars, on a basement. It should be based on something. Any, every technology uh, and the registers are the pillars, the centralized registers are the pillars for every technology. We have 1,000 uh, registers which can talk to each other because they are filled in different format. And what is done now? That was we who uh, made up this video. This uh, Ministry of Finance is, is seeing it. That's our vision because we are changing. Uh, we are changing the main pillars for this new platform. These are registers, the register of legal entities. The register of individuals is being uh, uh, under construction, uh, register of property, everything is done. Additional money are spent for this register, then register of addresses too is our next step. These four uh, items which uh, take part in and in, are involved in any business process. And as soon as uh, these items will be ready, we will be able to solve uh, all issues. I can't uh, take a lot of time, of your time. We will have a next discussion on marking, on uh, the registration devices, electronic uh, VAT invoices. All these business decisions will uh, change the technology of tax administration. We assume that together with the right of the taxation service to get, starting from next time, with the uh, accounting, not Rostat, non-demographic, only only uh, a taxation service will be able to do it. Along with that, we will uh, come to the fact that the taxation authority will just inform the taxpayer how much it should be paid, and all um, there will be no other taxation procedures. It's going, it's moving very hard, uh, really. We are dreaming a lot, and thank you very much again for this wonderful discussion. Dear friends, just uh, briefly to sum up, I have four conclusions, four words, the, which are the most important. First is the movement to the contactless state, the state where subjects are not uh, are contacting together without the state uh, directly. The second message is openness. And uh, what Mr. Abazov uh, achieved uh, in the recent five years is just incredible. I was skeptic. I was skeptic about it. I didn't believe in that, but uh, it turned out to be possible. Thank you very much, Mikhail, for your job. And uh, I just didn't uh, imagine that such results could 
be achieved. Uh, third point, the uh, right for error. The most important problem, each error is uh, interpreted as a crime, and that's uh, disastrous. In the modern technologies, it's, an, it's just a nonsense. It's just a reason for everyone to stop. Uh, when uh, the history is uh, is being uh, reevaluated, which two years ago was a practice, now in new interpretation is it becoming a crime and being uh, reinterpreted uh, in the hindsight. And uh, the fourth thing, the key thing, is the problem of trust, because without trust without a clear, open, and transparent uh, moves of the state, everything else is of no use. So even there are low taxes, uh, if it's not uh, transparent, no one would do business if there is no trust to a partner to the state. If, tr if you don't trust the state, the state doesn't trust you. And uh, I'd like to finalize with the historical story. The situation was in 1921. For those who know the history of the Communist Party, there was the year of announcing a new economic policy, a private business. And at that time, one Soviet uh, a lawyer, Mr. Linov, um, asked uh, a businessman. So the Soviet uh, state guarantees you the deposits in the state bank. Will you invest? He said, uh, well, hardly. It uh, uh, guarantees only the investment, but not the life of the investor. And this is the key thing in the trust with the state. Thank you. Thank you to our moderator. Many thanks.